Pardon me, madam. Madam, I'm talking to you. We're about to do the taping now, so be quiet and behave yourself. <laughs> Max. Yes. Yes. Oh, Max. Yes, madam. Here we are. Yeah. You are the greatest actress in the world. Do love. Give me hate. Give me misery. Give me fear. Great cut. Print. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, does that bring back memories? Oh, yeah. Well, this whole, look where we are. I know, 33. There's Mrs. O'Wiggins. There's Mrs. O'Wiggins, and uh, there's Stella Toddler, oh, and I there's... Actually, I, I would have been here <laughs> just a well, moment earlier, but... Uh, excuse me? Car was not Where are you? All that. That's Stella Toddler. Tim, we started... Tim, uh, I, I would have been here earlier. Hello? But... How do you do that? Hello? That's good. Hello? Those... Ah! <laughs> Mrs. Hi, Wiggins. Guys. Boy, that was good to hear you guys doing that again, you yeah, know? You like it that? was, it just, it, this whole studio brings back oh such my. warmth uh, and memories. You really invented a lot of people. Well, I have to say also, uh, not only the writers and us, but Bob Mackie invented a lot of these Brilliant. by the way they, they look. Um, and this particular video that we're going to see now, that's with uh, Dinah. Oh. And uh, and Conway, you were a guest then. Yes. I, I don't know how yes. many of you know that everybody thought that Tim was always on our show as a regular. He was an irregular. Mm -hmm. He would come on, uh, what, two or three times? No, t twice a month, maybe once a month, something like that. It was less than the plague. Yeah. And, fi <laughs> <laughs> and finally... <laughs> The ninth year, we ran for 11 years, the ninth year, the penny finally dropped, and we said, why don't we have Conway yeah. on every week? <laughs> now, what we've got, uh, I think in this tape, it's the uh, butcher. Oh, oh the, the butcher, and Anthony Hopkins, I think, was in the audience, yeah, and I was, was so, the, yeah. I was so nervous that he yeah. was there. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, but this is also the show with Went With The Wind, isn't it? Well, yes, yes, yes. Now, that was um, where you play Ashley, you rap Thank butler. You. Better than Clark Gable, too. Oh. oh. Well, you look like him when you come oh. in and that out. I oh. did not know what I was going to do until no. I got into that uniform. And, it and, and it's the like mask you say. became the face. And That's then suddenly happened. I had it all on. Yeah. I had the mustache. Yeah. I, had, I walked on, <laughs> and it was there. I was just astounded. You were Clark Gable? The sketch is brilliant. The writing is wonderful in this. It's a true movie parody. And uh, so they had written that, you know, when I come down the staircase, they had written, uh, would have been funny anyway, that I'd ripped the draperies down and thrown them over my head and, and just came down all sloppily, you know. I walk, walked into costume fitting that Wednesday. We always had costumes. And Bob Mackey said, I have an idea. What, says I? <laughs> and he said, how about this? And he held up the curtain rod with the draperies on it. <laughs> I fell on the floor. I said, this is the most brilliant sight gag I think I've ever seen. And of course it was, you know, when I came down those stairs I know. and the whole that thing. Was a classic, it yeah. was a classic. And so that's kind of what everybody remembers. And uh, I'm happy that we're showing the full thing in its entirety on this tape because um, it's, it's brilliantly written. What we did, and looking over these tapes again, yeah. I mean, it was sensational. We did a Broadway show. show every week. We did a I mean, Broadway musical, musical review oh. every yes. week. Yeah. And our, our record, our average was so high. It was really extraordinary. Yeah. I must say it. I must say it. It's the truth. Mine was a lot higher th than yours, I think. Uh, you, were, you had a tendency to do a lot of laughing uh, during the sketches, I which I thought if I didn't laugh, was very who unprofessional. Would? Yeah, at some of true. your craziness, yeah. your nonsense. Your unprofessionalism. You're really getting on my nerves. Thank you. I hope okay, to. Okay, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll Sorry, be right now. back with the next one. <laughs> Smack you.
Pete Matz and the orchestra and our regulars, Harvey Corman, Vicki Lawrence, and Tim Conway, we have the lovely Miss Dinah Shore. <laughs> Listen, Dan, I gotta tell you, there is a young man in our audience tonight. He is, uh, you know, I've always said I love James Stewart. You know, when I grew up, he was my favorite actor. And uh, he's kind of like an idol to me, remind me of my dad and the whole thing. And so there's a very special place in my heart for James Stewart, always. I love him. Uh, but I will say, uh, sitting in the audience tonight is my favorite actor today. Marvelous man, and his lovely wife, Jenny, Mr. Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back. From Television City, Hollywood, it's the Carol Burnett Show. With Harvey Gordon. Vicki Lawrence. Tim Conway. Martini, please, straight up, no olive. I'm so sorry I'm late, Paul, but my board of directors meeting ran much longer than I thought it would. No problem. Anyway, I, I know you're on a tight schedule, Celeste, so yeah. I brought along an agenda. Oh. I have it right here. Huh? There you go. Well, that all seems to be in order. Yes, I'd like to call your attention to item number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Let me get out the old glasses here. Um... Item number one to be discussed, uh-huh? Yes, the ramifications are so diverse, I thought it would be better if we hashed item number one out verbally. You better get your feedback first before I submit a full report. Very well, then. Why don't we discuss item number one? Well, in brief, Celeste, uh, I'd like you to be my wife. <laughs> I understand. Go on. Well, recently it's come to my attention that you and I have been enjoying each other's company with escalating regularity since fiscal 74. <laughs> and I might add, we've been showing increasing profits ever since. Mm, except for that one dip in the second quarter this year. <laughs> A momentary loss of confidence. Uh, but I have brought along some position papers here mm -hmm. uh, detailing the various factors that you'll probably want to consider. Mm -hmm. They're very important here. There's uh, children, mm -hmm. uh, religion, mm -hmm. uh, your mother, mm -hmm. right here. Well, restraints are definitely in order here. I think um, so. I wonder if, if you would take this one, Paul, and capsulize the essence of that paper for this me. This one? Please. Children? Yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. Now, here I have determined, based on current indicators, what mm -hmm. I feel should be the optimum number of offspring mm -hmm. for us. Could I see that? Have the figures right here. Uh-huh. That's it. Oh, yes, here it is. 1.3 children. <laughs> I'll uh, have to get back to you on that one. Paul. Surely, surely, surely. See, now this I can look over later. All Actually, right. what I would be interested in hearing from you now would be your analysis of why you think marriage would increase our marginal utility over the long term. I've done my homework in that area. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see if you can follow my reasoning on this, Celeste. Now, based on an analysis of available data, I love you and you love me. Uh, would you mind if I made some notes? No, 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 certainly. Oh, you have right. a pen? Yeah, right. Thank, you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Paul. Let me see here. Let's see. Uh, you love me. Yeah. And what was it? And oh, I, I love, love you. I love you. Uh, I just want to... Uh -huh. You know, it always helps me to have these things down in black and sure. white. Well, I uh, think that covers the emotional aspects of our relationship pretty thoroughly. Let's see what else. The physical. Oh, yes, the uh, physical. But well, I'm sure everything is important there. Now, let's see. Just a minute, Paul. Uh, when it comes to the physical, I definitely do have some reservations. 
<laughs> that second quarter dip. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, Celeste, I was simply a victim of a momentary depression, but you must agree that I rallied during the following quarter. A sluggish recovery at best. <laughs> really, Celeste, I thought this was an area that we had pretty well gone over. If you recall, when you expressed your reservations at that point, was I not responsive to them? I must admit you were. You know, as a matter of fact, I was recently going over the notes that I took that evening. <laughs> notes? You, you took notes? Oh, I always take notes. Oh, yes, here it is. Well, you know something, you're quite correct. As a matter of fact, you put it quite succinctly when you said, quote, please believe me, this has never happened to me before, unquote. You not only take notes, you take very accurate ones. Uh, well, I wonder, would you mind if I mulled this over a bit and got back to you at the beginning of next week? Sure, that's all right. All right. Excuse me, will you? I have to visit the washroom. Surely. Oh, could I have the telephone, please? Thank you. gentlemen, the fabulous Miss Dinah Shore. is easy if you take it logically now I'm here to help you if you're struggling to be free there must be 50 ways to leave your lover he said it's really not my habit to intrude I hope my meaning won't be lost or misconstrued But I'll repeat myself at the risk of seeming rude There must be 50 ways to leave your love 50 ways to leave your love Just slip out the back, Jack Make a new plan, stay. Don't need to be coy, Roy. Just get yourself free. Just hop on the bus, Gus. Don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, leave. And get yourself free. Said it grieves me now to see you in such pain. I wish there was something I could do to make you smile again. I said I appreciate that, and would you please explain about those 50 ways to leave your lover? He said. Why don't we both just sleep on it tonight? I'm sure in the morning you'll begin to see the light. And then he kissed me and I realized he was probably right. There must be 50 ways to leave your love. 50 ways to leave your lover just slip out the back jack make a new plan stand don't need to be coy Roy get yourself free just hop on the bus Gus don't need to discuss much 
Just drop off the key, please. Get yourself free. Mm, get yourself free. Just get yourself free. Get yourself free. Just get yourself free. in a hurry. Could I have a pound and a half of ground round, please? Cease. <laughs> and take an order here until you take a number. <laughs> There's nobody else in here. Man, I can't wait on you until you take a number. Oh, for heaven's sake. Right. All right. I got a number, okay? What is it? <laughs> 28. That's your number. That's my number. <laughs> now, could I... Right. <laughs> twelve <laughs> Number twelve. chance to stop and smell roses. <laughs> Can I have a pound and a half of ground round? Don't talk into the chickens. <laughs>
Fine, that's fine. Now, uh, that's a good piece of meat. Now, would you just put it through the grinder, please? Hey, hurry up! <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Will you hurry? Right, right in Russian right now there. Stop yelling at me. Having guests for dinner tonight. No, oh, well, you ought to do something for that. <laughs> All right, get it out of here. Put it down. Put that right through the grinder for you now. Want all that ground? Yes. All right. for dinner last night. <laughs> good. Yeah, they look good, but it's not a hot dog. What is it? It's a pork chop! <laughs> no wonder it kept slipping out of my bun. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Just give me those hot dogs right there, will you? Now wrap them up so I can get out of here. Nice. I don't believe this. I got them now, all right. Well, all right, just wrap them up. Yeah. Want these gift wrapped? <laughs> no, I don't want them gift wrapped. I didn't have any ribbons. Never mind, I don't need it. Just wrap them up, will you? Out of the window. It's dusty on there. Well, just give me a half a pound.
fine. There you go. I'll right. wrap that up. Never mind. I'll just take it just like it is. Just stay. No, just stay away. <laughs> you about this? All right, half a pound of cheese and a pound of hot dogs. How much do I owe you? Well, how does $20 sound? What? <laughs> how does $3 All right, $3. Huh. Here, wait a minute. Here, here's huh. a $5 bill. Right. Okay, I'll get your change. And hurry. I'll come right up. And... Where are you going? Get your change out of here to the cash register. It's in the freezer? I know, I put it in there. <laughs> Now hurry up! <laughs> hey, uh, what did you give me? A five dollar bill! Oh. You got anything smaller? What? <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I'm gonna see a lawyer about this. I don't believe there it. There he is, officer. I told you. Oh, oh what a disgusting man. Okay, friend, let's take a little ride downtown. Wait a minute, officer. I can explain all this. Will you tell him what happened? Sure, I will. Well, go ahead. You got a number? Oh, <laughs> for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show. And now, back for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show. Recently, nearly the entire nation spent a total of five hours watching Gone with the Wind make its TV debut. So for those of you who ran out of Kleenex and were unable to watch it, we put together our own mini version to let you know what you've missed. Oh. Uh -huh. Lovelier than ever. Oh, why, Cousin Beauregard, how you do turn a girl's head. <laughs> Miss Darling, I swear, you are a vision. Why, Cotton, you got enough, enough charm in you to be twins. <laughs> <clears throat> Remember me, Miss Starlet? Oh, Billy Joe, my goodness, I thought she jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. <laughs> I believe you know my cousin Melody. Yes, of course I do. Come Thank in, Miss Wendy. Oh, Rashley, darling, why don't you go into the parlor and I'll join you directly, huh? Uh, uh well, what about Melody? I... Oh, don't worry, don't worry about Melody. Uh. I'll take care of that twit. <laughs> Darling, how sweet of you, how kind of you to invite me. Yeah, I know, but come on in anyway. <laughs> May I take this moment to tell you how very much I do admire you, and I certainly hope someday we can be as close as sisters. In the meantime, Melody, why don't you just stick your head in a punch bowl? I'm sure it could use a little more sugar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes. Ashley, my darling, I got something to tell you. Well, I have something. No, no, no. 
Let me tell you mine first, and then you can tell me yours. Mm. Oh, Brashley, I love you. 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 I really, really do love you. Now, what was it you wanted to tell me, darling? Mm. I wish you'd have said that sooner. This isn't going oh, to be easy. Uh, Brashley, mm. I love you. I love you. Well, I uh, love you. I, I married you. Melody this afternoon. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. How could you do that to me? How could you? Uh, well, it wasn't. Uh... <laughs> For a minute there, I thought she was going to be mad. <laughs> oh, I'm just so upset I can spit. Oh. Oh. Hold on there, Scott. <laughs> You're liable to bust a stay. Sir, you should have let your presence be known. Just who are you and how did you get in here? I'm Captain Rat Butler. <laughs> and I arrived here by way of a streetcar named... Desire. You, sir, are no gentleman. And you, Miss O'Hara, are no lady. <gasps> Darling, I oh. love you. Oh. You and I are cut out of the same rotten, dirty cloth. Oh. Renegades, both of us. If it went for this blasted war, I'd marry you in a minute. What war? Miss Dollar! Miss Dollar, that doesn't play at war! War! Oh. That how does that I'm on my way to war. A lonely soldier going to almost certain death. Don't you want to give me something to remember you by? I certainly do. <laughs> that ought to do it. Let's go, Brashley. We don't want to keep the war waiting. Right. Good, so, goodbye, my darling, Brashley. <laughs> my starlet, your concern for my Brashley is overwhelming. You have a full and generous heart. You're sick. <laughs> disagree with you the four of us i do believe i'm going to have a baby a baby yes oh shoot <laughs> what are we going to do with a baby in the middle of a war oh now don't you worry now miss starlet i know everything there is to know about birth and babies i've done it lots of times oh, good. oh that is such a comfort to me sissy because i do believe i'm going to have it now oh my goodness Ma'am, this is to inform you that General Sherman's army is now occupying Atlanta. You got a match? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Here you go. Thank you. Sissy, who is that at the door? Just some soldier. Great balls of fire, they're burning Atlanta. Well, you better hurry up down here with them letters, Miss Starter. This baby ain't gonna wait for no fire. Oh, my goodness. Here, here's your hot Good water. Heavens. There's your linens. Oh.
in, it simply isn't done. <laughs> He's at the door! He's at the door! I'll get him! Afternoon, ladies. I'm here to collect the $300 back taxes on Tara. Oh, well, uh, won't you step into the parlor while I fetch my pocketbook? Very well, but you better be quick about it. I will. Why don't you just go right over here? Uh, tell me, could I offer you a chair? Why, well, yes, I you don't mind if I do. You got it. Starlet, what's new? Nothing, nothing is new, darling. Everything is just the same as it was when oh, you left. Well, not quite, Starlet, darling. Don't forget about little Brashley, too, yeah? Uh -huh. We'll talk about your brat later. Right now, I got more important things to discuss. Listen, Brashley, they want $300 on back taxes on Tara, and I don't have the money, so could you help me pay up the note? Well, I'd love to. Oh, you oh. sweet, generous darling, Brashley. You've always been so oh, good. Brashley. <laughs> yeah, but you see, my money is gone. Gone? Gone where? It went with the wind. <laughs> what wind? Well, that's pretty, but it doesn't answer my question. <laughs> Come upstairs. I want to show you our son. Oh, what? No, but wait. What am I going to do about the back taxes? Well, why don't you ask that nice Captain Butler? Oh, no, Count Lowlife, Captain Butler. You mean Rat Butler, the man who became a millionaire during the war? My precious rat, where is he? Well, he said he was going to be here this afternoon, but he stopped off at the Camp Town races. As you folks know, that track is five miles long. <laughs> uh, he was out there bidding on a bobtail nag. But, uh, I put two bucks on the bay myself, of course. It's only a deuce, and he probably only paid 260 to show, so I do da do da. <laughs> Brashley, darling. Don't you want to go upstairs and see little Brashley Jr.? Brashley Jr.? Yes. God, I was hoping you'd kind of name him after me. Sissy! Sissy, get in here. Oh, what am I going to do? Captain Butler is coming over, and he's got money, and i got to get it. And look at me. I look like the inside of a goat's stomach. What am I going to wear? Well, Miss Dollar, the Yankees done stole all your clothes. I know that, stupid. No, Miss Dollar, isn't that Captain Butler's carriage now? Oh, Lord, what am I gonna do? Well, I've got an idea. When he comes in, why don't you hide behind the drapes? <laughs> Sis, help me take these down. Well, what's she doing that for? Never you mind. Now, listen, when he gets here, you just keep him busy. You understand? Yes, sir. Because I've got me a dress to make. Yes, sir. <laughs> Afternoon, sissy. Is Miss Starlet at home? Come on in. She'll be down in a minute. I really like what you've done with the place. So, how are you, Captain Butler? How am I? You ask that of a man who just returned from battle? Who returned from seeing brother pitted against brother? From seeing the world that he loved crumble beneath his feet, and you ask, how are you? How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks, and you? <laughs> I'm a man of many wishes, is he? I wish this filthy war never happened. I wish for a time when life was simple and beautiful. I wish I was in the land of cotton. <laughs> Old times there are not forgotten. Look away! Look away? Look away! <laughs> Dixieland. You know, that's real catchy. You ought to set that to music, Captain Butler. I wish one come true, sissy. It like my dreams have went with the wind. What wind? <laughs> That's 
real pretty, but that don't answer my question. <laughs> And you, Starlet, I love you. That 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 gown is gorgeous. Thank you. I saw it in the window and I just couldn't resist it. <laughs> Starlet. I'm sorry. Maybe it isn't Starlet. Isn't it Starlet? Starlet. Yes. Will you marry me? <laughs> marry you? Why oh, you're the scum of the ocean and the chicken of the sea. <laughs> of course I'll marry you. Where are you going to find a minister? Well, I'm a minister. Oh, good. Will you marry it? Sure. I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, how about them back taxes? Here you are, minister, $300. Uh, sissy, show the minister the door. Shoot for $300. I show many thin he wants. Come on, show <laughs> Last we're alone, Starlet. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. There will be no kissing in this marriage. Oh, yes, there will, Starlet. You need kissing. You need a lot of kissing, and from someone who knows how. Oh, oh put me down! Oh, put me down! What are you doing? Oh, 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 oh. Now, Scarlet, I'm pooped. <laughs> Shoot, this just hadn't been my day. <laughs> oh, Brash. Oh, uh, hi, Scarlet. What's going on? I just became Mrs. Rat Butler. Would you like to kiss the bride, my darling? Well, I, 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 well, I always seem to be interrupting your tender moments. Rat. Step out of the way, woman. This is between us men. <clears throat> oh, perhaps I ought to get out of the way then. Wait, you! <laughs> 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 Hey, oh, it's a good thing you hit her. You could have killed me. <laughs> Please, pardon the intrusion. I do hate to be a father. <laughs> I'm going to that great plantation in the sky. Wait a minute. Hold it. Just say that you got something that's going around. Please. Oh, is that you, my darling, Brash? Would you please ask Starlet to come here? I want to talk to her. Please. Right, right, I'll get it. <laughs> I want to see you. You got it. I'm coming, Nelly. I'm coming. <laughs> yes, Nelly. Yes, what is it? Oh, my darling. Yes. Yeah. Like my sister, you are like my sister. Yes. I want to tell you, I've been thinking about our friendship all these years, my darling. Yes, Scott. Nellie. I want you to know how I really feel. Yes, Nellie. Oh! I can die a happy woman. <laughs> die, y'all. <laughs> She's gone. Look at her. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. 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 She's gone. Gone. She's gone. What, Brashley? You, you really do love Melly? You never let yourself believe that, could you, Scarlett? Oh no, I knew he really did love her, but I never knew he really, 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 really did love her. I really, 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 really did love her. Now she's gone. 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 She's gone. I really, really, really did love her. Now she's gone. She's gone. She's gone. I really love her. She's gone. 
And I'm gone. <laughs> oh, Brad, my darling. Darling, a man loves like that only once in a lifetime. And once that love is dead, it can never be rekindled. Brad, what are you saying? Start it. Brad, Brad. I'm leaving you. Leaving me? But, but what'll I do? What will become of me? Frankly, my dear, I don't oh. get... <laughs> what did he say? He said, frankly, my dear, I don't get. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Oh, sissy. Sissy, what am I gonna do?
up in smoke And then he treats it like a joke He's just an ordinary sort of guy And I love him till I die Ooh. A good man is hard to find You always get the other kind So just a hug Plenty love and better treat him right Because a good man nowadays Is hard to find I got nobody And nobody cares for No, 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 nobody cares for Nobody cares much be sure and be with us next week please i'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or sing a song <laughs> seems we just get started and before you know it comes the time we have to say so long good night harvey's trying to play the trumpet The preceding program was recorded before a live audience. This is your announcer speaking.